how do you see the future of open government from your perspective? Open government is an opportunity for us to extend those capabilities and to um, more efficiently and effectively connect with uh, today's constituents and constituents of the future. I think the future of open government is, is more collaboration online, uh, not only pushing out information in English uh, for an audience overseas, but to, to actually engage people one-on-one uh, -on -one in online discussions in, in language, in French, uh, in Spanish, Portuguese, Chinese. Hello and welcome to the Open Government Playbook. This website is a place for you to share your knowledge and collaborate with others who are working to implement the Open Government Directive. Successful implementation depends upon our ability to come together as a community of advocates and practitioners and learn from one another. The Open Government Playbook is a collection of tactics and strategies for incorporating transparency, participation, and collaboration into government operations. All material on this website is available through a Creative Commons license, and that means that you may use it on your own work without copyright restrictions. This is a wiki, so you can share your ideas by writing them here, linking to resources and conversations on external websites, or even uploading your own video. The first set of videos is from the kickoff event which took place in November 2009 right here in the nation's capital. We will hold a series of highly engaging conferences throughout 2010 and those conferences will embody the directive's principles of transparency, participation, and collaboration. This website is a resource that we will build and edit together. We welcome your feedback and suggestions for making it even more useful. The Open Government Directive has created a tremendous opportunity for positive change, and now it's up to us to follow through. This is Keith Moore from Open Government TV here with Julia Cunningham. Julia Cunningham is with Comto. Yes, Comto. Conference of Minority Transportation Officials. Okay, and she has a amazing innovation community engagement um, story that's, uh, I think, a success story that needs to really be echoed in a meeting like today with jobs as being the forefront of concern. It, it absolutely is a success story, and um, it's one that can be replicated across all federally funded construction projects, and that's what Compto is insisting happen. Um, 60 new African American carpenters on a and on one project. This project is located in Missouri. It's the, it's, it used to be the old I-40 and mm -hmm. it is now the new I-64. Okay, and it was how many, con how many jobs were created as a result? Um, 91 on-the-job training, mm -hmm. 91 um, OJTs, and uh, as you know, in the apprentice world, you know, you got to stay on the job long enough to become a journeyman and right. then you can work anywhere and you have a good construction career. And so the process um, was so that so that that would work so that people would not just work a few hours being be, be being counted and then get booted off the project right. they stayed on long enough so that they are now you know these they are they are they have construction careers what was the budget for this project the, pro the project was 535 million dollars and who was some of the prime contractors um, the primes were a team it was okay. a team of um, Firms. This came out of Department of Transportation. This is this is a Missouri DOT project okay. that was stimulus funded. stimulus funding. Um, I-64 was not stimulus funded, okay. but they have also done stimulus funding. So, what is your focus of wanting to? You've just testified before Congresswoman Barbara Lee and uh, other members of the CBC. What is your main emphasis of testimony in terms of? telling them what you'd like for them to know today. The purpose of my testimony was to um, drive home the fact that job creation on transportation projects is very doable. It is not rocket science. It, it, it has been done and it's been done successfully. In addition, DBE participation. The United States Department of Transportation has the only legally defended program for women and minority owned businesses. Department of Defense. Department of Transportation. Department of Transportation. Yes. And the program is called the Disadvantage Enterprise Program. 
I don't particularly care for the word disadvantaged, but the program is alive and well. And, and it works. And it's working. It doesn't, it doesn't always work. It's, it's been broken. And you know, right. eight years of another administration, the program was very broken. But the program, is, it's not a hard fix. So we will absolutely, Julia Cunningham, stay in touch with you and follow and make sure you know a little bit more about open government because that is truly revolutionizing the way government interfaces with community projects, populations across the board, and the way government is actually going to be funding and communicating with businesses. So I look forward to a continuous discussion and how we could uh, parlay some of your talent and exp expertise. I look forward to joining you in that discussion and I'll bring some of my comrades from Missouri DOT and they can tell you the things that they did that were totally out of the box um, non-traditional approach to make those numbers what they are today. A wonderful way to end uh, a great session today on jobs and uh, struggle. Keep hope, as Jesse Jackson would say, alive. Maybe out of work, but not out of hope. Thank you so much, Thank you. Ms. Cunningham. Thank you.